Welcome YouTubers, I'm Steve and this is another video from Ergonology and I do hope you like that little video montage I put together of the PARD NV008 LRF, the LRF standing for the laser rangefinder. If you're new here, don't forget to check out the YouTube video description where you'll find links to our Facebook group, our forums, also our 3D printed items where you can actually get these PARD8 lens covers as well, as well as our brand new merchandising and stickers as well. But anyway, before I start, I need to give you a full disclosure. Not so long ago, I was lent by one of my subscribers, um, Eric, thank you, Eric, the PARD, the original PARD MV008 non-laser rangefinder, and I loved it so much, and you guys seemed to love that video as well, and so did PARD. They contacted me and said, can we send you one direct from the factory and send you the laser rangefinder version? I'd be a fool to say no, wouldn't I? Um, so yes, this is mine. Um, no, I didn't pay for it. And yes, I still will tell you the good and the bad sides about it. Um, but yes, let's talk about this anyway. So what's the major differences? Well, the major differences is this one comes in a blue box. There you go, you can end the video. Nah, nah, not really. Now, this one basically has a rangefinder unit built on the side. So the parts always come with the, uh, with the Picatinny on there. And I used to do videos on these bad boys here, which are the, the Bob Love type rangefinders. And I always wondered, stick one of them on the side of that, and then you've got night sight and rangefinding, etc., all built into one. Well, guess what? Pard went and did it, and very, very well indeed. Look at the size of that little rangefinder unit. Just sat there. Um, so let's walk around this whole thing and explain how it all works. So for those that don't understand these, these are basically just like a camcorder. So you know the old camcorders you hold to your eye, you're looking through a lens element and then you're looking at an LCD screen and it's a digital lens, let's say. Um, and on there then there's letters, words and stuff put on top of it like your battery power, etc. It's exactly how these things work. It has to be powered on for you to look through it. Um, but basically, because it's a little mini computer in here, then they can put different reticles on there and do loads of wonderful fun fancy stuff. Things like picture in picture, project the range in here, allow you to change the colours of your reticles, switch it between day and night mode. So this is a day and night mode scope as well at a click of a button. So let's walk around it. What we got here is the eye cap here, um, nice soft uh, rubber eye. So this is a zero eye relief one, keeps the stray light out and allows you to see the LCD screen. You've got an ocular focus here for your eye. Um, at the front, we then have a focus for the actual lens element here. Um, really, really nice. And then we have the IR torch. So this actually has a built-in IR torch as well. So that when you switch this to night mode, you can then increase the levels of this between power one, two, and three, the IR uh, brightness, the intensity on there. And it works out to 200 meters, and I've tried it. You can also focus it by pulling it in and out like so. Um, so built-in IR on there. It also has a built-in red dot that you can then zero up to your crosshairs. So if you want to do red dot shooting, you can. And then, of course, you've got the laser rangefinder on here that is accurate out from six to 600 meters. Meters. And I've tried it out to three to 400 meters and it works absolutely brilliant. Now, when you look through this, you'll actually see where your crosshairs are. To the right, you will see a yellow cross um, and the number of the ranging on there. And it's always gonna be to the right because of this is basically mounted parallel to the line of the scope and is off to the right. Um, so it's a matter of basically pressing the range finder, it pings, you move across, you range your target and then you move your crosshairs back to where you are because you know what the range is and use your hold over and hold under. So really, really nice up there. Um, we have a Picatinny rail on the side here and it comes um, complete with its own set of rail mounting systems as well. So you can put it on Picatinny or Re Weaver and it comes in a nice little carry case and this is a blue one instead of the red one, which is for the uh, non range finder version. And in there's instructions and a nice protective case and carry uh, for it. So um, there's a lot uh, to talk about this. Um, I think the probably the easiest thing to do is for me to hook up a computer to this and walk you through the menu system, the two shot zero, and the features that this bad boy got. And then I'll come back and tell you what I think about it. So outside, and I've got the PARD laser rangefinder version 
are sat on top of my FX Impact and I've got the HDMI output connected up to my laptop. Now some people might put that on a separate screen if they find it easier. The one downside of that is it does remove the image away from the eyepiece. But it does allow me to show you on the computer screen, therefore on the YouTube video, exactly what I'm seeing. But please remember what you're seeing here is the 800 by 600 image in the, in the eyepiece, not the full 1080p recording, which I'll show some of that later. But on screen we can see at the moment I'm zoomed in. Um, I, if I press the Q button, I zoom out to the default six and a half times zoom. Um, and I can zoom in by pressing the Q button again, like so. Um, if I press the IR button, press and hold it, it will take me into what they call black and white mode. So you have two modes, color mode and black and white mode at the moment. And there we go. And then we can just literally just change the focus a little bit. So you will need to change it. So we're focused in. Now, at the top of the screen, you'll see it says IR off. We're in black and white mode, but the IR torch, the 850 nanometer torch, is switched off at the moment. And we're in daytime at the moment, but it still works. If I press the, but the IR button once, it will then switch the torch on to intensity one, intensity two, and intensity three for out to 200 meters. And you can use the zoom functionality at the top of the IR as well. Um, we'll just zoom out. Um, and this gives me the ideal opportunity to show you the laser range finding aspect of this uh, PARD 8 um, and why you're paying that extra 200 plus pounds. If I press the range button now, you should see to the left, uh, to, sorry, to the right of the target, you should now see a set of yellow numbers. And basically the range finder is now constantly pinging out and you'll see that there is a um, a yellow box with a yellow cross on it and that is a rough indication as to where the actual rangefinder is pinging. And even in daytime mode, in black and white, the IR, because the IR filters moved out the way for black and white mode, you can actually see the laser flashing. And that laser will always be roughly where that yellow box is, about six or seven inches to the right, because of this is where the rangefinder is on the scope itself. So the idea is basically, you find your target, you press the rangefinder button, you move the yellow uh, box over, um, and basically you range your target, and then you can switch it back. And then you can switch off like so, um, and then the rangefinder unit disappears. So really, really handy and nice and useful to use. Um, what I'm gonna do is go back to daytime mode now, and I'm just gonna walk you through the menu systems and show you um, how it all works. Um, the one function I do wanna show you is the picture in picture. So if I press and hold at the moment, and then if I scroll down, we can go to what's called picture in picture. Now, if I click that, what it will do is it will give me a zoomed in version at the top of the screen and shows you what I'm looking at in two times the magnification of what you're set to. So you can see at the top of the screen, top center, you can see it there set up there. Um, and that's really nice because when you go to 13 times zoom, it will actually give you in 26 times at the top. So really, really handy on that. So I'm just going to go in and switch that off for the second. And at the same time, so I'll walk you through the menu systems on how this, how it all works and some of the functionalities in here. So a reticle adjustment, I will come on to that at the very end and show you how that all works. Um, but if we go down now and have a look at our default um, magnification, so we just cycle through the menu system. This is when you switch the unit on, do you want it in six and a half or 13 times? Generally, you probably leave it in six and a half times zoom. Um, and then we have the default color of the menu system. Um, the default brightness of the IR, when you switch the IR on, do you want it in one, two or three mode? Uh, the brightness of the actual screen itself, so you can reduce the contrast and the brightness of the actual LCD. Um, we have the rangefinder unit, so you can do this in meters or in yards. Uh, we have auto recording and auto loop. These two are interlinked. When I switch the unit on, do I want it to start recording to SD card immediately? And do, how do I want it to record? Do I want it to record in a three minute constant loop over the same file? five minutes or 10 minutes, or do I want it so that when I manually decide to record? So I'm basically gonna switch that off um, and have it so that when I press and hold the rangefinder button, it will then start recording until I press and hold the rangefinder button again, and it will stop recording. 
Uh, we have a date stamp. Do you want the date to be put over the top of your video? Um, do you want to record the audio? So there is onboard audio with this. Um, I will leave some of the footage later where you can hear it. It's not great, but it works. Um, we can have it beep to us each time you press a button. Um, we can switch the Wi-Fi unit of this on so it has its own little hotspot. You then connect your mobile phone up to it um, and then you can do live video feed on it or copy the pictures off it or anything like that. We can change how the exposure works on the LCD. Um, if it's a really bright sunny day, you can knock the exposure levels down. It helps you with some contrasting and helping you see. Uh, the language of the unit, the date and time of the unit. Uh, you can format the SD card or clear all of the profile information down or using that menu option. You can reset it to default factory settings. And then we have the version and I'm running the latest version of August 19. So what I want to do now is take you into how you two-shot zero this. Um, so we'll, we'll just um, click OK on that and we'll come back out. And what we're going to do is um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to take a simple shot. Now this is quite difficult, so I'm having to do this through a laptop. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a single, a single shot here. And hopefully on screen there, you can just make out to about 11 o'clock. It's top left, it's gone a bit high. So what I want to do now is um, I want to zero this in. So basically, if I go into the menu systems now, and I go into reticle adjustment, and in here I have five different profiles I can do. So I can set this up for five different rifles. So when I put uh, the quick releases on and off um, and set it up for each of those rifles. So we can cycle through, um, we can have A, B, C, D and E. So the one I'm playing on at the moment is C. Now the bit that I need to do now is I know my shot has gone top left. Okay, so what I've got to do now is I've got to put my crosshairs over exactly where, uh, where I was aiming, which is right at the centre of that target. And then basically I need to press to hold the, uh, to change the X. Okay, so now I move the X across and the Y to put the crosshairs to where the pellet actually landed. So I need to go the other way. And then I can do the Y axis as well. I'm trying to do this all on camera through a laptop and it's quite difficult but you'll notice that the, the, the picture has frozen to allow make this a lot easier for me and then I think I've got that right and then we save that out and now we're free to take another shot and see how well we did and let's just refocus this pretty good and that's how you do your two shot zero in um, so really really nice and while we're in here we'll also show you the other reticles that you can get and the color options so if we come down and go into the reticles so with the styles of reticles we have in here we have uh, different styles so we have different crosshairs um, classics on there or you can switch it off as well um, you can also in here change the color as well so we can have yellow or red these are the only two options as of august 19 um, and what i'm going to do right now is actually i'm going to switch my crosshair off just to show you the other nice little feature so i'll just switch this crosshair off which it's done now and we'll save that out and now if i just press the menu button once you should start to see a laser red dot this has a laser red dot built into it as well. So what you do is you use the little Allen keys up the top here, just like you do with the little miniature ones you put under a pistol. You line it up to your crosshairs, and theoretically now, wherever that red dot is, I should be shooting at. So let's see if we can hit the target. Not bad, I was pretty close. Let's have another go. Oh, same hole <laughs> but that's how it all works really really nice little features so this whole unit is packed full of features but we'll do a bit of nighttime work with it as well and show you what it's like okay so we're out on the range at the moment and i've got to just put some targets out a fairly short distance at 20 meters um, and you can see that i'm in the ir night operation of the part eight um, um, and i've got it all set up quite nicely and what you're looking at now is uh, a real-time sd recorded hd format 
uh, video recording straight from the unit. But if you want to use the rangefinder, then all you got to do is basically just press the rangefinder button once. And now at night time you can definitely see the, the laser light flashing and bouncing back and the numbers reading there 20 meters. So all you do is if you see your target is literally you press the rangefinder button, you put the yellow box or the flashing light if you can see it over your target, you read it and then you put your crosshairs over, you do your hold over and hold under and you take your shot. And obviously that rangefinder will keep flashing away so if I move down further down the range we can see that's reading 24, 25, 26 meters and then we can come back to our actual target itself uh, no problems whatsoever and then when you're ready you can then just take your shot so we know where we're going on that and take your shot um, and then you can zoom in let's have a look that's pretty good I think that was a bullseye nicely and then if you want to just get rid of the rangefinder you can just press the button again and it will switch itself off and I'll just show the IR torch levels as well so basically we're on IR1, the second intensity gets a bit brighter, and yes we definitely hit the bullseye there, and then IR3, and this is good out to 200 metres tested, and if need be, you can always put an extra torch on the side Picatinny mount that you have on the Pard 8. Okay, so I'm back, and um, straight out, I love it, it's fantastic. Um, you know you guys that I've been a big uh, ATN Excite fan, but look at this, look at the size of it. This thing is titchy, let me give you some specs on it. This is 500 grams, uh, without the battery, without the, the mount on it, but 500 grams, look at the size of it, fits in my hand. It's a quarter the size and a quarter the weight of the ATN 4K Pro, um, and it's got the built-in rangefinder. Um, so a lot of people say, 850 pounds that's expensive no not for what it does you look at the market leaders on there the Yukons you can get for about 500 but then you want the recording for functionality then you start getting up to 700 pound mark the ATN X site 4k pros that's 800 900 pound if you want the rangefinder unit on it then you got to spend another 300 pound the size and the weight of it and, you know I've been through you, you I hopefully you get that this has got so many features built into it and because of it is a mini computer effectively they can update the software and add new stuff so in August 2009 they added the picture in picture cool little functionality whether you use it or not different matter but they can do that they can change the records the colors and stuff on there so it's packed full of features a fact that obviously it's a day and night site so you can use this during the daytime then you go out and you go ratting at night press a button play with the IR torch bang you're in night mode and the fact that you can record with this because of it is a camera system on here effectively like a camcorder then this thing is recording in full 1080p P at 30 frames per second. Fantastic. The eyepiece that you look through here, you're looking at uh, an 800 by 600 um, LCD, but full 1080p recording, unlike some other claims from other people out there. The fact that it's a single battery, um, an 18650 battery in here, we've got loads of them, all of us hunters out there for our torches, and those with electronic cigarettes have got them in there. So, yeah, pop one battery in there. If it runs out, not a problem carry another one pop it in away you go really really nice on here um, the image quality on here as well just uh, if I've not said it already is crystal clear it's perfect really really nice it's fast it's simple to use you power it up within three seconds it's on it's never crashed on me unlike others where basically they'll crash regularly or just freeze on you never ever crash it's so simple to use um, and it comes in a nice packaging as well um, some of the bad sides about it, and I'll definitely tell you some of the bad sides. Um, the loose focus wheel on the front here, it's still a problem, um, same with the par date, but you can tighten it up with some screws in here. Uh, I think the little Phillips screws, you can tighten it up. Some people don't like the way this looks on a rifle. Um, they think they're missing something. Um, this is really great for bullpups like FXs and stuff like our Wildcats. Um, great for bullpups or Pulsars from Daystate, for example. But um, yeah, that also sort of brings you on to another point where on some rifles this might not fit because it has to be so far back on the rail that you might get in the way of the magazine and therefore you might not have enough on the rear rail. I'm talking about the classic bolt action hunting style rifles, but then I think this would look out of place on there as well and you probably wouldn't want to do it. This is really aimed at the bull puppy type market uh, rifles out there. Um, 
The one th problem I've had with this, um, and I've had this on free rifles, and I know two other people that have contacted me as well, is that when you actually put this on your rail, it is generally pointing too high compared to the bore of the barrel. Therefore, you have to shim it. Um, and I've put this on free rifles, and every rifle I've had to shim it. Now, if you're putting it onto dovetail, and you've got dove Picatinny to dovetail uh, adapters on here, they generally come with um, their own screw thread shimming devices in here, which is easy to do. But if you're on a Picatinny rail, then that is a bit more difficult. So what I do is the actual mount is attached by three screws under the bottom here. At the rear screw, I put a washer or some sort of shimming device in there, and that lifts the back end of the scope up and then brings it more to the bore and then properly zero it in there. So you will get problems shimming this in. There is a shimming device that they give you, a little metal tab that you can screw in out, but unfortunately it only lifts the front end up. You'd rather have one on the back as well so you can lift the back up. They don't do that, unfortunately. Uh, there's no ballistic calculator in here like the ATN. You know what? I don't care about that. Um, it, the chances are, being a computer, they're updated and put one in. Um, it won't take them too long to do that. And even with the ATN and the ballistic calculator, I hardly ever used it. Um, getting a hold of one of these can be rather difficult. Um, have a look around. Um, try likes of um, Blackwood uh, shooting supplies. I know a lot of those have a good discount. Um, there's, and there's a lot of sites that have discounts for these, so check around, and that might help bring the price down a little bit as well. Um, and the and the, other, and the other thing is basically when you plug the USB lead in here, you'd be able, expect to be able to read off the SD card. No, you can't. You actually have to take the SD card out to read it. And that does bring me on to another point where people say that you shouldn't charge through here the 18650 battery. Um, I don't, I don't believe that. It is, that is a charging point. If you've got a decent 18650 battery in here and it's properly rated and it's been looked after, there's no harm. Of course, don't leave it alone. Um, you should never charge um, these type of batteries up um, unattended. But if you have any worries or worries about that, take the battery out, put it into your standard battery charger. It's going to be quicker anyway. But um, there, those are my thoughts. I absolutely love this. Um, fantastic, fantastic little unit. Certainly now the new kid on the block. Um, before it was the AT and Yukons, this is just taking the top spot now. Uh, so small, so light, feature packed, um, the price is fantastic as well. And the fact that they just built this rangefinder into it as well, and it's all fully integrated, no problems at all. I love it. I think it's fantastic. Certainly a keeper. And I certainly recommend that you guys go out and get yourself one if you're interested, because I know a lot of you have. So um, so those guys that have gone and got one, I'd love to know your thoughts, your comments in the um, description, uh, in the video comments down below. And again, if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, check out all of our links. Don't forget our brand new merchandise, and it all goes to help the channel and I'll catch you on the next video.